Good morning, this is Angela with Parker's Permaculture. It's a chilly December morning. We are in Portland, Oregon in zone 8B and our winters here are, as you can see, typically muddy and rainy and more mud and more rain and more gray. I like it that way, but sometimes we get cold fronts and we get snow. Usually we have a significant snow event like once every five years, although we had one in February of this year, we are forecast to have snow right after Christmas and potentially a lot of it. And temps are gonna start dipping quite low into the low 20s, which is, which is pretty darn low for here. So I thought I would share some of my do's and don'ts for taking care of ducks and chickens in cold weather. Now I'm sitting here with John Cena. She is my favorite chicken. She is a big, beefy Brahma hen and just such a sweet girl. Now she's not the most prolific egg layer and she eats more food than my other chickens, but I have a big soft spot for her. Some of y'all have asked if I would make a video about uh, predator prevention with ducks and chickens. And that is an upcoming video, but let me just give you one quick tip as a teaser for that video. I keep all large heritage breed chickens and larger breed ducks. And I make sure that I don't keep any white breeds. Those are two things that are really key for making sure that hawks and owls are not gonna go after your birds. I guarantee you that a 14 ounce um, sharp shinned hawk or a one and a half pound Cooper's hawk are not gonna take off with my 11 pound Brahma. So. Anyway, uh, keep an eye out. That video is forthcoming. I have a lot of tips. We have not lost any birds to predators in almost a decade. Yeah, in a, in a decade. Okay, so the topic of today's video. With this upcoming cold front, let's see if John Cena wants a treat first. With this upcoming cold front, I've seen a lot of folks posting about what they do and don't do or what they think they should do or not do to take care of their ducks and chickens in cold weather. And I have a couple of do's and a couple of don'ts and I wanted to share them with you as somebody who's kept poultry for over a decade and has faced a lot of weather fluctuations and we've never lost a bird to a weather event. So let's talk about a couple of don'ts and a couple of don't bothers and then we'll talk about a couple of do's that I think are really helpful in not only increasing the safety but also the comfort of your birds in really cold weather. So as for don'ts, number one, please do not put a heat lamp in your coop. Every year I see posts in homesteading groups and chicken loving groups of somebody who's had a fire and lost their birds. Um, potentially a really, really dangerous situation to put a heat lamp in your coop. Don't do that. There's lots of combustibles, wood, straw, hay, dry wood chips. Don't put a heat lamp in your chicken coop ever. Your chickens don't need it, and it's a big safety risk. Here's a don't bother that's not necessary. I saw somebody post in a homesteading group, and I've seen this a number of times, and it really confuses me. Folks say you need to feed your chickens cracked corn and soy in the winter in order to keep their bodies warm. Chickens have a high internal temperature. They're a warm-blooded animal. They thermoregulate on their own and they have this luscious coating of feathers. Same for ducks. They don't need to be fed cracked corn to keep them warm. That's a myth. So I don't feed my chickens cracked corn or soy at all, actually. That's not something that we feed them. Right now, John Cena is having a snack of oatmeal because otherwise she'll go hop off into the garden behind me and go for, I know I hear you baby, and go for uh, Swiss chard and collards and things like that. So um, I may let her down in a minute anyway. Let's talk about a couple of things that are do's that will help your chickens be more warm and more comfortable and your ducks as well. I should also say John Cena loves to potato. She loves to roost on your arm um, and just like hang out there or on your shoulder. And I think this is because we babied her a lot when she was little. So she likes to just sit in potato and oh my gosh, she's very heavy. She's 11 pounds. My poor forearm can't handle it. But she's very happy to just hang out on your arm or your shoulder for a long period of time because we would bring her in the house when she was little and that's what she'd do. Okay, so I'm gonna let her roam around and I'm actually gonna put my mittens on because I'm really cold. Okay, so a couple of do's that I think are really helpful. 
Some folks put a light in their chicken coop, not a heat lamp, but a low wattage bulb or maybe non-LED old fashioned Christmas lights. I don't bother with this. There's some thought that if it's below 15 degrees Fahrenheit, this might be helpful for your birds. I think it's more that it eases the anxiety for owners. I don't do that at all. I've never found it to be necessary. And the reasons are because the dews that I have keep my chickens safe and warm and in good condition to weather cold fronts, snow events, things like that. Number one is have a coop that is really secure, that has good airflow at the top, but is not drafty. And there's a couple of reasons you need both good airflow and draft prevention. Somewhere like the Pacific Northwest in the winter where it's very wet and muddy, we have a lot of mold problems. Ducks and chickens have a complicated respiratory system, much more complicated than a human's, and they're really prone to fungal infections. So you wanna make sure that you have good airflow and that if moisture does accumulate in your coop, it has a chance to evaporate and dissipate. So you don't want a coop that is so well insulated, you're getting mold issues in it. But you also don't want a coop that is leaky and super drafty because as we know as people, a draft can really cut through you and really chill you quite easily. And even with their nice big fluffy feathers, chickens don't love a draft either and ducks don't either. So I make sure that I have good airflow at the top of my coop and that way moisture that accumulates doesn't cause a mold issue. But I make sure that around the roosts and nest boxes and lower down in the coop, it is not drafty, it is well sealed. The second thing that I do for my chickens and ducks is I make sure that they have an awning outside. They have a place that if they're outside foraging in cold, rainy, snowy, icy, sleety weather, they have an awning they can hide under to escape the weather if they don't want to go inside their coop. I found the ducks don't give a crap and are happy out in freezing rain and snow and obviously in rain. That's their sweet spot. They love precipitation and so they don't use the awning. But when the weather turns crummy, my chickens will often hide under it. So just making sure they have that shelter and a place to stay dry, even if they're outside the coop and they're foraging. The next thing that I make sure I have in the coop is a good layer of fresh dry bedding ahead of cold weather. For us, that can look like a multitude of things. If I have straw, I'll use straw. If I have fresh wood chips that are dry, I'll use wood chips. I keep extra bedding stored in my garden shed and that way I know it stays dry. I can't keep a pile of wood chips out in the yard. In the Pacific Northwest, it'll be wet. But I put a fresh layer in. If I don't have anything like that, I will even use shredded office paper. So under the awning, I also have an area for dust bathing that I keep uh, piled with wood ash. Chickens have a great ability to thermoregulate and keep themselves warm and insulate themselves with their feathers. If you see your chickens and ducks fluffing up their feathers in the winter, they're creating these air pockets and trapping air against their skin and keeping it warm. That helps keep them warm better. They need good feather conditioning for this. So making sure that they have dry dust bathing materials, even in crummy winter weather, means they can keep their feathers conditioned and insulating them better. Obviously ducks have an oil gland and they are waterfowl and have no problem keeping their greasy, stinky feathers well insulated and well functioning in winter weather. Now, in terms of food, I just said you don't need to feed your chickens and ducks cracked corn and soy to keep their body temperature up. But I do like to improve the comfort level of my birds. I know they have a good quality coop that is well insulated, draft free. There's nice dry bedding in their nest boxes. They have an awning to protect them if they're outside. But I make sure that they have some treats to help them in get through the cold weather without being so grumpy. Particularly if it is very chilly and snowy, my chickens are often hesitant to exit the coop in the morning for breakfast. The ducks, again, they'll come steamrolling out. They have a separate house from the chickens. They'll come steamrolling out and they're making their happy little quacky noises because they love snow and they love mud and they love rain. But if the weather's bad, my chickens will often hang out in the coop and kind of grumble. So I try and entice them out with an extra special warm breakfast. Now I grow a lot of winter squash for our family, but I also grow a variety of winter squash that are specifically for poultry food. And I roast them in the oven 
and ducks especially, but chickens as well, really love roasted pumpkin. I can also do roasted potatoes that I've dug from the garden. When those are warm, not hot, you don't wanna give your birds crop burn, but just a little bit warm out on a cold morning, that is a real treat and it gets them going and they really enjoy it. And it's a way that they can have a breakfast of something I've grown on my property, costs me zero dollars and I'm not using any commercial feed. So another thing that I do for a treat, maybe if it's really crummy weather in the afternoon, is if we've had oatmeal for breakfast, I make an extra big batch and I make sure there's some leftover oatmeal and I take that out to the ducks and chickens as a treat when it's uh, still warm, not super hot, not cold. And that kind of boosts their morale and helps them get through the cold snap a little bit better. You do potentially need to give your chickens and ducks a larger ration of food if it is very cold out because they will expend a significant amount of energy. So I do find that I give my birds an extra ration of food. But again, it's not a, a huge amount more because they have such good insulation in their feathers. worried about a water supply make sure that your birds have lots of fresh water and you may consider purchasing a bird bath heater if you have sustained cold temperatures where their water buckets and waterers are going to freeze all the way through i find where we are that's rarely an issue i just come out and i break the crust of ice in the morning on their water that i filled the night before and they're fine it doesn't generally refreeze during the day, particularly if you have ducks that are constantly cleaning their bills and their nares in the water, they're breaking that crust on the ice. And I find I don't need a bird bath heater, but it may be colder for longer where you are and you need to make sure that your birds have fresh water, especially ducks, which need to submerge their entire face multiple times a day to keep their eyes and nares clean and also to help them swallow their food. So I will say a few caveats here. If you have temps that dip very, very cold for a long period of time and your birds are not acclimated to it, it's okay to lavish them with some extra treats. If you're really worried about them and you want to give them um, warm food or bring them into your basement or put a non-heat lamp low wattage bulb out in your chicken coop because that reduces your anxiety as a chicken or duck owner, I think that's fine. I think that's fine, but I just want to encourage you, you don't really need to worry. Our poultry are really good at taking care of themselves, particularly those big, beefy, large heritage breeds, particularly if they have a good coop, their feathers are in good condition, and they have good nutrition all year round. You don't need to worry that much in cold weather. Now, if your birds are in the middle of molting, they've been stressed or their fall molt is late right now and they're pretty denuded of feathers, that may be a different situation. If you have an elderly bird that you're particularly concerned about, maybe you wanna make a hospital box, which is we take a storage tub and we put straw in it and we take a bird into the basement if they're a bird that we really care about and is more of a pet than a livestock bird. Again, poultry owners, you don't need to have a lot of anxiety over cold weather. You don't need to go overboard unless that helps you get through the cold snap and helps you be less anxious, but your birds will be okay. Make sure they have a good setup to begin with, lavish a few little treats on them, give them a little bit larger ration of food and they'll be all right. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and please click subscribe. I'm really close to 15,000 subscribers and that would be amazing if I could get there before the end of the year. I will be back soon with another video from the garden. Thanks.